Federal Reserve is facing tough criticism. Republican presidential candidates talk about replacing Fed Chairman Ben Bernanke. Some lawmakers and economists say the central bank is partly to blame for our current financial crisis. Mark Calabria is the director of financial regulation studies at the Cato Institute. Previously, he was a senior member of the Republican staff at the Senate Banking Committee. Mr. Calabria says Fed policymakers did not lay out a game plan and have not been consistent. He joins us now from our Washington newsroom. Mark, welcome to Bottom Line. Pleasure to have you on today. Oh, it's great to be back. Uh, Mark, that uh, statement that I just read, some lawmakers and economists say the central bank is partly to blame for our current financial crisis. Are they right? I think they are. I mean, I think there's a real sense that you had earlier in this decade, and I should emphasize, this was when Greenspan was chairing. Bernanke was on the board at the time as a governor. But you had from about 2002 to 2005 where the real after inflation federal funds rate was negative. And so in my opinion, you set up a situation where you have about three years of you're paying people to take money, yet that's going to end badly. I mean, that's going to end in some sort of bubble, whether it's in the housing market or some other area. So I think there's a real sense that the Federal Reserve interest rate policies of earlier this decade fed the housing bubble, fed a bubble across all interest rate sensitive sectors. And once you started raising rates later in the decade, that bubble burst. So uh, I do think there's a sense of that, that there's a concern that the Fed was one of the ones who helped gin up the bubble to begin with. Well, you say again, as I mentioned, you say the Fed didn't lay out a game plan and they haven't been consistent. How so? Well, let's look at, I mean, and this is not necessarily monetary policy for the second, but let's look at sure. the uh, adjustments in 2008. You know, when Bear Stearns was rescued, pretty much everybody assumed anybody bigger than that. For instance, there was this company called Lehman that was about twice the size of Bear Stearns. Everybody pretty much assumed if Bear was going to get assisted, Lehman or anybody else who got in trouble got assisted. And as we know, Lehman got two, three different offers to be bought, to be purchased, to be restructured. He rejected all of those because it based the assumption of, I'm going to get assistance from the Federal Reserve or the Treasury. And so, again, I think the sense of who is going to get bailed out under what terms, again, compare WAMU versus Wachovia versus, you know, some creditors took losses, other creditors got, get, got bailed out. So in terms of financial stability and the rescues that we saw in 2008, it was really across the board who got treated well, who didn't get treated well. Freddie and Fannie, for instance, are being kept in a definite limbo, whereas, you know, Lehman went through a bankruptcy process. Within yeah. two weeks, most of its assets were already transferred. So, again, yeah. We didn't have a consistent policy on how companies were going to get treated who got in trouble. You know, and nor have we necessarily had a consistent policy of what we're going to do in monetary uh, policy. Mark, is, is, uh, is it yes. possible that uh, the lack of consistency in that policy was due to the fact that there was not a template for a crisis of this size, scope, or magnitude? I'm not sure there's a template for, for, for much of a crisis at all. I mean, you know, we have a template now under Dodd-Frank, but we don't use it for Freddie and Fannie. So if we're not going to resolve Fannie Mae, why do I think we're going to resolve Citibank? Mm. Uh, you know, that there were tools on the table. The bank regulators did not want to use bankruptcy proceedings. Now, I think you could do some changes to the bankruptcy that help. Now, they had options. So I think the often choice you see presented, that it was either rescue or liquidate, is a false choice. I think there were other options that simply weren't considered. Uh, I don't think you have to liquidate a firm necessarily. We've all flown on a bankrupt airline probably once or twice. So you certainly could take these institutions into a bankruptcy, yeah. do a debt to equity swap, resolve them where the taxpayer wouldn't have to pay a dime. Yeah. You know, I think it's important, and this is one of the lessons of the financial crisis, decide on your strategy, be transparent about it, be honest about it, and stick to it rather than sort of flip back yeah. and forth depending on what the politics were today. Well, speaking of the politics of today, Fed Chairman Bernanke, yes. he was speaking at a Boston Fed conference today and he said that one of the key lessons that was learned from the financial crisis of 08 central banks must have a dual role of controlling inflation while supporting the banking system should that be part of the mandate I think we need to open that up again. And it's important to keep in mind that the chairman was talking to an academic audience today, mostly sure. economists, and was really trying to justify, I think, to the academic community some of the actions that were taken. And there really is this very large debate. A number of countries, like, for instance, the ECB only does monetary policy, does not supervise banks. Britain, they had a division, and they're going back and combining them, too. So various countries do it very differently. The Federal Reserve supervises, regulates banks at the same time it does monetary policy. Quite frankly, for maybe the very same reasons that Chairman Bernanke says we need to keep the two, I think we need to separate yeah. the two. His argument is essentially the information you get from bank supervision lets you know when you should ease monetary policy to add stability to the banking system. Right. Quite frankly, I don't want loose money just to bail out the banks. 
you know, once the Federal Reserve is responsible for the banks, then I believe you compromise your independence on monetary policy because okay. monetary policy gets conducted also to try to bail out banks rather than just worry about overall inflation. Uh, Mark, if I might ask, we have about a minute left. Sure. We are hearing a lot. We heard it during the presidential debate uh, that Bloomberg sponsored just uh, last week up at Dartmouth. This undermining of Fed Chairman Ben Bernanke, does it hurt or does it help? Well, you know, certainly I think the Federal Reserve is a topic that needs to be debated. We do live in a democracy and the Federal Reserve is, should not be independent of public debate. You know, in all the time the Treasury Secretary, the President meets with the, ch with the Chairman of the Fed. So I think it's legitimate that we're able to raise a variety of voices and ask what exactly the Fed is doing. Sure. I can't think of a topic be more important than monetary policy that the American public and Congress should be more involved in. We can debate which policies it should be taken, but I think it's absolutely critical we have that debate. Uh, repeatedly, Chairman Bernanke has simply said, you know, I didn't want to be the chairman, you know, over the Great Depression, too. I did what I needed to. Well, you know, they came, you know, they regularly told us they couldn't tell us who was being bailed out, who was being assisted. I mean, yeah. once that information has regularly come out, I think it's added more transparency to the Fed. I think ultimately okay. having a debate about the role of the Fed will strengthen the Fed rather than weaken it. Mark Calabria, Director of Financial Regulation Studies at the Cato Institute, joining us from our Washington Bureau.